Welcome to Open, everybody. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. And our first guest is uh, known to many as America's psychologist. And he joins us today to discuss mental health during this time. Of course, we have the time of COVID-19, police killings, protests, racism, unemployment. Dr. Dr. Jeffrey Gordier, how do you handle all of this? I know your phones are overwhelmed. You're being texted and emailed all over the place. Well, the important thing for me, and first of all, hello to you, Dr. Bob. We always a pleasure to be on with you and to your wonderful audience. Um, but, um, you know, the important thing is that I have to keep myself healthy, too, uh, in order to be yeah. able to help so many people. Uh, I, I think all of us have been giving a mission on this planet, either Earth uh, 1.0 or Earth uh, 2.0 that we're on now, yeah. right? Uh, and so that it's important uh, to be able to help others. We've got to help ourselves. And that's one of the things that I do. I try to stay fit. I exercise. I eat properly mm -hmm. um, so that I can help so many others. But that's the lesson, isn't it? That for it all of us as uh, family members, as friends, as members of the community, we've got to keep our mental health. Uh, we've got to keep our, our physical health uh uh, certainly uh, stable uh, so that we can reach out and help others. A lot of people right now, they're up in the air psychologically. Things are changing by the minute. They really are. Uh, whether it is a, a situation of the COVID-19 or whether it's the social upheaval that we're seeing, whether it's positive progress, whether it's partisanship uh, in Washington, oh. uh, ending with a divided nation, resulting in a divided nation, uh, I, I think many of us have not found our sea legs yet. Um, so I, I would say right now, the jury's out as to how we're doing as a nation psychologically. I would say we're really unbalanced at, at this point, but we will we will do better. Yeah. Do people call you a lot? I mean, in terms of the divisiveness of what's going on in America, because it comes all the way down, divisiveness uh, from the top. Uh, the, the divisiveness uh, in our neighborhoods and in our families, our very own families. Well, um, you know, I, I, I really decry the fact that uh, we don't have any real leadership uh, from the top. They, uh, that old saying is true. The fish stinks from the head down. Uh, and therefore, if we're not getting the kind of leadership that we need, it's going to leave us uh, divided. It's going to leave us fighting against one another. And that's the no. last thing that we really need with COVID-19. Now is the time for all of us to come together. So yes, I'm getting the calls. Yes, you know, I'm doing all the Zoom meetings and so on. Um, but, uh, you know, in uh, an environment uh, that is uh, uh, somewhat toxic right now politically, uh, my driving message is that we cannot let politics divide us. We must come together uh, in order to um, uh, not only right the wrongs and find social justice, but also to be careful uh, with regard to our social distancing, wearing our masks and doing the things that are required for us yeah. to flatten the curves everywhere when it comes to COVID-19. And as you know, we're seeing a spike uh, in COVID-19 across yeah. the country. We're not, we didn't learn our lesson as a country when we saw what was happening in the world, and we're not learning our lessons as individual states with regard to what happened to places like uh, New York uh, and New Jersey uh, and, and other states that are now doing better while others are doing worse. There's just no excuse for that. Yeah, it is said that when people come to New York and New Jersey and Connecticut, Connecticut now, they have to quarantine for 14 days That's after right. they get here. Yeah. That's and, right. Uh, uh, they were treating us like that when we went elsewhere. They right. stopped yeah. you at the border. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, you know, what's fascinating with that, uh, Dr. Bob, is that, um, uh, yes, it is uh, required now that uh, you do quarantine if you're coming in from other states into uh, the three states you just mentioned uh, previously. Um, and again, I think that speaks to the importance of having the leadership uh, around issues of wearing masks and social distancing and just to let the states uh, by themselves determine what's happening and therefore you have a willy-nilly approach. One state is doing this, another state is doing that. That's like kind of like the whack-a-mole way of trying to uh, deal with COVID-19 and it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And Doc, you know, there's always a cause and effect. You got the uh, COVID-19 police killings, protests, racism, unemployment. What are the effects of, uh, of all of that? 
happening? Well, I, I think uh, COVID-19, for the lack of a better term, was the accelerant uh, to the fire of change. Uh, with COVID-19, everyone, everyone, but especially, as always, uh, people who are black and brown and the elderly, of course, and those who are immunocompromised, felt the effects of COVID-19 more than anyone else. But every one felt the effects. And so I think it, it, it really empathized, sympathized, and certainly sensitized people to what uh, the lack of social justice, uh, racism, um, you know, all the isms uh, can do to people uh, in leading them and putting them more at risk for illness. And so I believe that COVID-19 really opened up our minds as to what poverty can do to people. And therefore, that's why we're seeing some rapid changes in, in certain laws and legislation being passed with regard to social uh, uh, equity uh, and eliminating social inequality. Yes. And so from that, you get frustration, PTSD, uh, sadness, depression, anger, unsolved grief, overwhelmed, demoralized. People feel that way but you have the solution to that when they give you that call. Well, maybe not so much the solution, but certainly what the empowerment strategies are. Uh, and you're right. Uh, I think people are experiencing, I said they're up in the air, and part of it is we're seeing uh, unprecedented levels of anxiety, of depression, of post-traumatic stress disorder, but the stress of this changing time, this extraordinary time, and events changing moment by moment, uh, and mm -hmm. so unrest. Uh, certainly has left people uh, with uh, a lot of the uh, symptoms that you just talked about. So what should people do? Well, I think there are a lot of things that people can do. First and foremost, for people who have to uh, shelter in place, uh, such as uh, you and I uh, and your great producer, Helen Greenberg, right? Uh, I, yeah. think, I think it's important, uh, if nothing else, uh, that we reestablish a routine for ourselves. Uh, and that it's important to get up at the same time every morning uh, in Earth 2.0 as we did in Earth 1.0. It's important mm -hmm. to shower. It's important to do the things we used to do, like meditate or, or pray. It's important to exercise, which I know is very important to you uh, and to me. Uh, yeah. It's important to have a routine every single day uh, to set up if you're working at home, if you're fortunate enough to still have work. Uh, to be able to set up a workstation, which is important. It's uh, also uh, paramount that we reach out to others, stay uh, uh, connected to others, uh, and be able to talk to others as to what it is that's going on. And if we're feeling some real uh, psychological effects, uh, we have telemedicine. We're able to call in and talk to people as to what's going in, as to what's going on, and they're in mm -hmm. chat groups and so on where one can uh, share empowerment strategies. And by the way, uh, Dr. Bob Lee, for frontline workers, essential workers and so on, the ones who do have to show up every mm -hmm. day and be exposed to COVID-19, it's important for them once they come home to have rest, to eat properly, to exercise as we talked about, uh, but also to stay connected to others. Absolutely. Jeff, and uh, I see in back of you, you have a uh, Toro College. Yes, yes, Talk yes. about what you do there. Uh, well, I'm an associate professor of, uh, of uh, behavioral medicine. You know, a lot of people talk to me about, uh, wow, what is all that work you do on the Housewives of Atlanta <laughs> and you're yeah. doing Maury and couples court and all this, you know, uh, uh, paternity court with Lauren Lake. And I say, I actually have a real job. I actually, <laughs> I actually do teach behavioral medicine. So, yes, you know, yes. that's the work that I do uh, at, at Tour College of Osteopathic Medicine in New York City. And you're also affiliated and associated with the new seminary for interfaith studies. That's right. And uh, something that you know a lot about. Uh, <laughs> it will uh, be, uh, you know, releasing some very important news about that at some point. Uh, but yes, I studied there uh, where uh, I became an interfaith minister. Uh, and someone asked me, well, why did you do that? Uh, you're a clinical psychologist of note. Why now become an interfaith minister? And I said, at my age now, approaching 65, I need to get as many brownie points as possible. <laughs> uh, I'll be coming to the pearly gates, God forbid, it's uh, sooner rather than uh, later. And so I want to be ready. I want to have that extra ID, that extra credential to say, please let me in. 
<laughs> Dr. Jeff Gordier. Any last words? Well, uh, look, everyone, uh, these are unprecedented times. Uh, and it's important to know that at the end of this storm, there will be a rainbow. We've got to come out of this stronger than the way that we went in. That's part of what we call post-traumatic growth. And my favorite saying is, uh, when you're going through hell, as all of us are right now, keep on going. Keep on going. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. That's right. Dr. Jeff Gordier, thank you so much. The doctor's in the house. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. And we'll get together and break some bread soon. Absolutely. And pray together. There you go. All right, Dr. Jeff Gordier. We'll take a break right here. I've got more coming up next on Open.